Testing. One, two, three. Testing, testing. Let's see if this thing shows up. Okay, so far, waiting for the YouTube to show up so I can do an audio check. Here we go. Now it's live. So far, so good. Do a quick check here. Very good, very good. So I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, thing in here. Start this stupid Instagram. I have to force it to go live manually. It's a dopey setup. And that one's live as well. Cool. Alrighty. Let's go back to where I was here. Monitoring the chat. Here is the stream if you guys want to jump in at some point. I'm going to go over some audio demos for a bit here. <coughs> follow-up to Norion demos. Uh, just always love this box and I've been playing with it more lately because I forgot a lot of cool features in here. Uh, excuse me, I'm getting some tea here in my throat. Um, so what have I done here? Um, right now I'm running the Tenorion. It's MIDI in from this Keystep Pro. Just using one MIDI channel right now. I put a delay on here so you can hear, you know, if I turn it off you can just hear the natively, but it's just more fun with delay on it, so it sounds better. Just on a uh, nice, um, you know, this is all samples, this AWM2 samples. There's no actual synthesis engine in Tenorion, although you can do synthy things with the samples, like any good sampler or sample playback unit. Um, as I said before, you have 16 layers, represent 16 MIDI channels, zero Sorry, 1 to 16, go this way. You have, um, and that one page is called a block. And you have 16 blocks, or 16 pages. So, if I go here, I can actually jump through different blocks. So I can have a whole song or a series of songs built, and you just jump between the two. This way. Between the, sorry, between the 16 pages, this way. So that's blocks. And when you save files, as you'll see, it says, uh, do I want to save a, a page? Or a, um, they actually call these, uh, also call these loops. This is looping tools I showed before, but I'll go over it again. So this is right now in the standard. Uh, this is, um, let me just verify something real quick here so I get the terminology right. Because I said I don't use these that often, but I want to make sure I'm giving you the right info. So we are on let's see which is the let me make sure I go on the bottom layer. So the layer one through what is it? One through sorry, I'm all twisted around here. One through nine, sorry, one through ten on the software version, which I'll show in a little bit. This iPad version I was able to dig up. Uh, they have score mode, and I believe it's the same on this on the hardware. I thought they had less score on the hardware. I thought it was like one through seven. Let me just verify that real quick here. You have. So that's a score mode. You can see the the DAW style playback head going side to side like that. So it's uh, that is yeah. So one through seven 
is score mode. For some reason, the iOS uh, version, I think it's 1 through 10. But it doesn't matter. So um, this is your typical mode you would expect from a like a DAW scrolling playback head. It's not only showing you that it's a playback, you know, I can I can stop the playback. Back this out all the way. It's paused right now. So if something we're playing, I start it up again. If I'm in this mode and then I hit cancel, I'm in the menu mode and I can dive through with the scroll wheel here and do some stuff. The scroll wheel actually has some cool functions within some of the layers of performance. So, um, yeah. So you have your score modes. Right now I'm in <coughs> layer one, which is a score mode. I don't have any notes in here right now, but because I've midied this to this, I'm actually midding in on channel one. Score one is channel one. And what's fun about this, not only have the delay turned on, but I just I just before I started the stream for fun, I recorded a little ARP sequence. So again, I do ARPs because this doesn't do ARPs. You can kind of fake it with some of the um, the live repeat modes and stuff and some of the uh, random modes bouncing around with different speed values and stuff, you kind of get a simulation of arpeggios. But this is running a proper arpeggio. I can even stop and I just do live. So that's the thing about using this with MIDI. Um, most people use it as a MIDI out as a sequencer, which is an awesome sequencer. So you can basically uh, control your modular via MIDI to CV or the MIDI Direct if you have your, you know, the proper interface. Uh, all of your rack units, all of your synthesizers, keyboard samplers, whatever you got, that uh, drum machines that take MIDI. This is a breakout. So if you ever buy a used Tenorion, whether you buy the TNR White, which is the TNRW, white LEDs, LEDs on both sides, magnesium metal case, battery compartments on the back for six AA batteries so it's totally mobile very sturdy nice and shiny beautiful unit and the screen is uh, a green screen uh, if you buy the TNR O that's the orange model that came out later is lower cost plastic case no back LEDs so these in the back here don't show up so if you're in a live performance we want to show the audience what you're playing you're pushing buttons here these are not buttons these are just a visual thing you don't have that on the O the orange but the LEDs are orange, white plastic case, kind of an off-white color, orange screen, um, and uh, it's a cool unit. So definitely, you wanted to to nori on. You don't care about portability. You want to save some money, etc. That's why they created it. Um, the problem is, so it's also DC only, right? No batteries. So you have to always plug it in. This one I'm not plugged in right now. The DC port is not plugged in. I'm on batteries. <clears throat> you get about five, six hours on batteries normally, which is pretty good. So make make beats on the train, on the plane, whatever you want to do, and then bring it home to work on it some more. The cool thing about this is um, you, know, you have all this flexibility and it's sturdy. But in any case, they all basically work the same other than that. Like I said, the software has some differences. The TNR, TNRI and TNRE, which is more like an EDM kind of electronic dance techno kind of sound set versus the this the TNRI software pretty much mirrors what this one is although like I said some of the features are slightly different but the sound set is basically the same and as you've seen before you can also load your own samples on here so 256 buttons 16 by 16 you narrow in your your layer so I'm in layer one score this is my um, all these quick buttons here give you some hotkeys these are basically local settings these are more global settings for the most part with some differences so like this is my layer so layer one layer one uses this preset which is um you just crosshair it in now you can use the scroll wheel to jump between so watch this if i play this um no sorry why is it not playing my sequence now Oh, I forgot to hit play. See, I had it in pause and I forgot about it. Always look for, in your score mode. You should always see the thing moving if you want to play. Well, theoretically, why is it not playing now? What the hell is going on here? 
Um, I'm in that mode. I'm on that preset. My volumes, these are my volumes. So, layer 1 through 16. They're kind of a medium volume, is not maxed out. These are also MIDI volumes, by the way, too. So, as I've shown you before, and I can show it again here, if these are down, you they won't, will not only not produce sound locally with the built in engine sounds, but they will not produce sounds over MIDI. So, I have a trick for that. If you want to do mix and match, if you want to do all Tenorion external, so like a, a, an external brain, this is just a sequencer here, but if I had a synth here and I wanted to control the synth from Tenorion, but I didn't want any Tenorion sounds, and I didn't have this plugged in to block the speakers having sound, and just hear this annoying Tenorion thing had nothing to do with my music. Um, because if you choose, if you turn the volume down on a channel, it will just make that channel dead. Well, if you want to use that channel for something else and don't want to hear it, then you can actually use nulls. So I basically made a null preset. I can apply it to any of the channels, any of the layers. And uh, that way you can mix and match. Uh, use the audio path from Tenorion mixing with the audio path of an external synth of some kind. And you can do it that way. So it's kind of not, and that's not documented in the manual. I just kind of figured that out myself. Um, but it works out pretty well if you do want to mix and match. Most people do one or the other. It's all Tenorion with your own sounds and some of the sound slots here as well as the internal sounds. With some external effects, you know, you can mix and match a little bit. Unfortunately, there's not, you know, this is a portable unit, so there's a master out. You can't do insert effects or whatever, but, you know, you can get clever with it if you want to multi-track it or something like that. and Don't do it in one pass. Um, but, if, like I said, most people use either these sounds only exter internally or MIDI this to something else and do it externally. They don't care so much about the mix and match, but I wanted to have the flexibility because some of the sounds in here are pretty good. And one of the tricks I was going to show, if I can find out why, this decided not to uh, just power cycle it because why not? It usually fixes everything. No audio there. This is definitely on. I don't know why. It's no audio. Interesting. This is definitely still playing. Oh. Ha ha. Little trick. Another trick. This I just totally forgot about this. Those of you who haven't used a Keystep Pro, I don't know why. There may be a setting to turn this off. I don't know. This this has messed me up in some hardware jams before, and I figured it out, but right now it kind of baffled me. See these two buttons here? This is Sequence. This is ARP. You can ARP all day with the ARP channel. But if you try and play a sequence with ARP turned on, it they won't do it you have to go to sequence mode when you play the sequence back. So you build the stuff, so you have it on record, and you can do this just fine, right? Then when you're going to play it back, you have to remember to change the sequence. And let me just make sure I have the right layer here. So layer one, we're going to pick this one again, I think it was. There we go. And now I can play my ARP. Now while it's doing this, I can I can audition using the scroll wheel without having to hit each individual button. There you go, that's the one I was on before. And I can also turn on my delay now, which makes it more fun as an arpeggiator. And now when I'm in this mode, I wonder if this will interact. I haven't tried this yet, but... Um, I'm going to use some of the local settings on here and see if they modify the incoming MIDI. So right now I'm on the um, this is the gate setting. Okay, it doesn't affect it. This is the um, 
octave setting. Okay, so that doesn't help. So these are, like I said, these are local settings. These are more global settings. So right now with the MIDI controlling it, these don't make a difference. This is my loop mode. Now again, I'm not playing any sequences here. So obviously this isn't going to change anything. But if I had notes showing up here, playing as it scrolls across, this is how you change your thing. So if you like, like when you do build-ups and like a dance song, goes that kind of thing, you would start changing these lengths, start and end points. Or put them on the same point and they go, it's like almost like a, not as fast as a ratchet, not how you have the tempo set, but it could be a ratchet. And then this layer is the um, local tempo for the track. So again, like I said, local, just that track only. So you can have interesting polyrhythms rhythms and stuff by changing tempos in different tracks. Uh, on this side, this is where you choose your layer. This one is um, master tempo, master um, octave, so master pitch change, volumes as you saw for the entire set. And this, like you saw when I first started, this is the how you change your blocks. And I'll show you on the software version. I, I built up a thing playing with it a couple hours ago. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so I can't modify this in any way uh, when I'm doing MIDI on here because it, these mostly control what's going on on the box itself. Anything I do as this, using this as a brain like I am right now, it's basically a dumb sound module. I have to do some modifications from this end somehow. So, which is fine. So I'm going to stop that. Interestingly enough, I thought pinch bend and mod would work on here. I could have sworn they worked before, but now I'm doing pinch bend and mod, I'm not getting any changes. So I might have turned something off to prevent that. I'd have to check. Manual is actually pretty detailed. Um, there's a quick start manual that's very graphical and nice, easy to use. There's also a more detailed text manual that, that's not that many more pages, but it's a lot of text. So um, I'll spend some more time going through those for the next show. But again, just want to go through some of the basics. So you can use this as a brain. And one of the cool things about it, so again, I'm going to change modes uh, to layers here. This is the live layer. So you see people doing like kind of pad kind of things with it some presets you hear it cycling through but it's also the way this is triggering it if you trigger from a MIDI let me change that to channel 16 if I had the uh, key step 37 or the key the original key step it's much easier with the keyboard to change the MIDI channel but it's okay I'll, I'll just do it this way real quick just to go through the steps um, need to change mini channel of track four. So now we're going to go to 16. So if I do it here, it's going to here kind of repeating. It's doing it here, but a little similar. The, some of the sounds here actually loop very, very well. This is a, something, I, again, I stumbled across a while back. Use this as a pad box. So all those these uh, samples are maximum 0 0.96 seconds. It's kind of meant to be a plinky-plonky percussive box because the guy who designed it, Toshio EY, was doing, uh, if you ever use this electroplankton software on the Nintendo DS, which I will pull out one day. I just have to find my DS and charge it and it's really cool, actually. It's a very cool thing. Anyway, he he's game. He's a lot of video game 8-bit music and stuff is very plinky plonky short sounds. Um, but occasionally you get some patty type sounds. Well, this is a step sequencer that has very short gates until you go into the gate mode, which I showed before. By default, though, they're all kind of short sounds. Like here, here the the looping is very good on this one. So, the right preset you can hear the loop there, but it's still pleasant. 
Some of these are really nice. Some of these are nuts. And again, you got to kind of figure it out which, which one works for you. And because some of these have a grow function, because these are these are used for the um, the um, was a preset on here called. I'm sorry, as a, a sequencer mode on here called. Get these names right, because I want to make sure this is correct. Um, so we have um, the push mode, which is kind of a blooming effect. So if I go to push mode real quick, you'll see. If I hold it. If I hold it long enough, it will engage. And you see it gets brighter and it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. Now some of the sounds on here um, see how that so they they actually have the way it's looping it does this nice almost a filtery kind of thing. Well when you play it directly like a filter sound. What sound was that? So over here. So go back to this mode. This is the sound I just played on the blue mode. See so the the louder it gets. It's probably distorting at this point. I should probably watch that. Um, but that's the thing about it is uh, these short samples but the way the circuitry's playing back the samples there's some added kind of magic on top of the samples so it's not just a, a dumb loop some of the loops are clean and don't bloom like that but some of them actually have that blooming effect so they plan that around that that push mode which is kind of clever so if you go back to the push mode again Two of them blooming now, and I get another one. And if you just hit that, you kill it on the spot. So that's kind of a cool performative thing. Um, good for live stuff, not just to sequence. It, although you could make that part of your sequence that you save, because this has not only sequencing functions, but a master record function. So. From the moment you hit record on the internal recorder, it will play back anything exactly as you played it, even if you made mistakes. So it's kind of a cool global record function on here that you can use, as well as sequencing the hell out of everything and using all these different layers of sequencing with all the blocks. So anyway, so that is some of the fun stuff you can discover when you play with these things. I did the same thing with the TD, sorry, TB3. Roland Touch Base 3, the part of the Iris system, which has the touch screen on it. I figured out the same thing there um, by um, hooking a MIDI controller and playing it as a brain, just a sound module, and figuring out, hey, this, they loop some of these pretty well, so you can use them as keyboard sounds, not just as some little drum machine triggery thing that you just tweak the knobs on. Um, so I encourage you guys to try that some more on some of your gear if you haven't done that. It's kind of a fun thing to explore. So let's see, where are we? So I have, you hit the score mode. You have the, um, I'll just jump over here real quick with the iPad app just to show you. It's much easier to show you than on the, on the thing because you can actually see the contrast makes it look a little cleaner. So these buttons are replicating the right buttons. These are replicating the left buttons. And they're numbered the same. L1, 2, 3, 4, 5. R1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's a play button, which is the same as this play button. There's no, they don't bother doing the cancel because when you hold this, you get your, your wheel. So um, anyway, so if I go, sorry, there's the wheel there. When you hold down a, a layer, you get your wheel. So I can jump through the different layer thing okay and so score and this one score is 1 through 10 
next layer would be random so on here it was seven so I'll show you random on here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So random would be eight. So here, turn off the delay. It would just sit here doing these until you hit another note. So if I just hit it again, it would just be whatever I locked it in on. But if I start putting more notes, it will start connecting them. Almost like a weird game of Pong. And you can keep going. You can add more. And one over here. But that's not all. You can use this button in this mode and start manually moving them little by little. Just control them. And so you get it a series of different pitches to add some unexpected bits. So here's a live component you could do as well. But even more fun than that is you have other stuff to do on here. So you want this to be automated. So you can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. Hold this button down, spin it, and the speed you spin it at, it will spin. And I could stop it, I could reverse it, have it go the other way, I can make it go faster, slower, or whatever, based on how fast I spin it. So very clever, again, you don't see this sequencer anywhere, right? Even, even OP1 has some pretty interesting sequencers on it, but this is very visual and, and uh, bizarre in its own special way. And again, you can change presets, it just gets bored with these presets, find one that works well. And again, it's pretty boring. There's built-in reverb and chorus per channel, if you want to use it, per layer. But they're not really that deep. I mean, the, the reverb's useful for the drums and stuff. But uh, the chorus is not super crazy. Um, that's why an external box is fun. Especially if you're only doing one layer at a time. So I can do... Now I can speed it up. it's faster. Another fun thing I can do while it's playing that, I can start using these other modes I was talking about. So this is the um, the gate mode. So I can turn the, make the note last longer. It's a pretty plinky plonky sound anyway, so it's not really obvious, but I can make it super short. Let's pick another sound that's going to give more interesting results there. Little drip noises. Sounds like an organ type sound. So again, if I go in here and I do make it real blippy, or make it long organ sounds. But to do that, you gotta make sure the notes all work when they layer over each other. So that's fun. That's the gate, or what they call length on here. And then this is the local octave. Now I'm so high, but I can probably barely hear that. Go down. Is it stuck? There we go. It's gonna go quite low to where the samples would degrade, which might be a sound you want. Why is it getting stuck there? That's odd. Hmm. I haven't seen that before where it gets stuck. It could be, uh, I never tried it with this, there we go, it was random mode before, but anyway, so any of the modes you have these tools available. 
and then this is the speed the individual speed per layer so speed it up We're going to make it super slow. It's basically a quarter eighth, sixteen thirty second notes. Relative to your master tempo, of course. The master tempo is this guy right here. So you can tell by looking at it, um, it's a nice, it's a vertical bar bar so you know okay that's master tempo you just have to remember which is which but the, the, they at least look different so you don't get lost so much this is a master tuning the master octave for the entire set versus the local as you've already seen me play with again volumes right now we're on track uh, eight if i turn this down eventually goes to zero and it's not only zero here because it's MIDI volume, it's also zero on the MIDI out. So if I were trying to control channel eight to something on MIDI, channel eight somewhere, you wouldn't hear it there either. It's not just a local thing, it's it's a MIDI volume as well. So another thing to remember. And again the blocks. If you had different stuff built on each blocks. And there's a oh, even a clever thing. Because everything's like this button plus this thing plus that. There's a cool feature where you can, um, uh, while you're in block mode, you can take, uh, as you build up a track, you can say, okay, I like track one, perfect, but I don't want anything else on it, so I'm going to start out real clean. So you can leave track one alone, you can copy track one to track, to block, sorry, to, to block two, block one to block two. Block one, sorry, block two, you add a few more things, copy those two or three things to block three, and keep building, building, building. Uh, and you can, there's a, a cool um, combo thing you can do. Watch this, if I hit this, see it gets a little brighter, and gets really bright. So by default, it's a move. If I, um, if I basically um, hold another channel it'll actually move it to another one if I make it a single brightness and tap the destination it will copy just the active layer usually it's layer one but it could be any layer uh, and if I tap it again it will copy all layers so if you have a whole bunch of stuff that are busy maybe you volume down or something like that or you just haven't you just want to make sure you get everything this this final tap I go over here and I say, click this. It will paste everything going in all tracks to this one. So it's a really interesting workflow. Once you get the feel for it, it's quick, 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 easy to build up songs. You can get pretty, pretty wild with it. So anyway, so that is the random mode. And then go up a little bit more. There's the draw mode. Let's see, I think draw mode is probably, I think there are a couple of random modes on this guy. So I think, oh, I'm gonna go back and clear that because I don't want to hear that again. Uh-oh, uh I put some notes somewhere, turn those off. So even when you can't see, yeah, not what I wanted. Wait, what did I do? Sometimes you get rogue things, you can't tell what you're doing. Just turn it down until it stops. Okay, so it's the fourth one down. Nice and clean. So we go back to, I think that was a draw mode. 
So this mode is interesting because it will it's additive and it'll just keep adding, 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 which is kind of clever based on what kind of sound you want to use. I'm going to turn off the delay. So you can play like individual notes and have it stack. And it's only so long, so you have to basically Now while it's doing that, I can also do these like flourishes with it. Gets pretty crazy and ugly and busy after a while. Also you notice each layer, depending which um, tool I'm using, has different shapes. So right now it's squares. Some are diamonds, some are X's, these different little things. And you can go in and tailor all the, the visual artifacts to stuff as well if you really want to customize it if it helps you remember what you did because when you're playing and everything's got layers on it and your visibility is only one layer at a time as far as what's bright you know you can still see little things bouncing around and kind of in a glance you know how many layers you have involved stuff like that so you can it gets pretty interesting so um, that's the draw mode um, What's cool is, like I said, it keeps adding. So if you have a specific, let's pick a preset that, uh, I think this is a nice, no, not that one. I think it's this one, maybe. It's awfully low. This one has, to, I think this is one of the blooming ones, so it has to take a while to build. So you got to pick one that starts out of the gate better. Let's try this one, maybe. Nope. Nope. Let me... Let me go to this layer. And figure out which preset I want from this guy. This is set to layer 16. So I can quickly browse the presets on here. Oops, wrong way. Wrong way, wrong way. No, there we go. There's a nice little filtery synth. Oh, I forgot to mention, this has, um, it's 16, 16 steps, 16 layers, but it's only 32 note polyphony. So it's designed to be plinky plonky so stuff doesn't step on each other. Um, but it's, you know, it, it all works out. I've never come across some stuff, but right now I actually hit, I think you have a limitation per layer of how many notes, so. Get a chord out of this one. So if I can go one more. Okay, so I can do at least four notes per layer. This is a nice synthy layer. So that was the fifth one in here. So let's go back to a draw layer. Let's pick the fifth one in. Let's see if I can build. Okay, so that's, some of those drawn out ones don't work on this layer. Um, you're not getting any time to grow. So I have to find other pleasing ones that... So you figure out a cadence and some notes that work for you. By the way, I also forgot to mention, by default this is set to Ionian. So it's C major scale, all the white notes. Got two of the white notes essentially. Until you go in and change the settings, you can 
again, like any instrument, change the crap out of it if you want to. Um, so right now, that's why I'm getting limited notes. Um, but you can see how it's just, it's like this running loop, but instead of having to actually see the playback head go over, it, it, continue, it contains the timing that you gave it, which is even crazy like this stuff. So it adds a little more expression instead of just having triggered notes. Not always useful, and again, it depends on the preset. And while I'm there, what the hell, I'm going to go with one of my wacky presets I put in here. Um, I sampled a parrot uh, I used to work with at the zoo many years ago in Palo Alto. Scully, the African gray parrot. She could talk, she could make all kinds of crazy noises from the kitchen sounds, the car sounds, the backup beepers outside, the telephone ring, kissing noises, uh, you know, wolf whistle. Also, the my favorite was the dropping bomb. <whistles> She would do that. It was just hilarious. Uh, that's the one I had trouble recording. I may have it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Um, so these are the three custom presets. Right now I made the bottom one the null. So if I want to um, still use a channel for MIDI out and not have audio coming out of this at the same time, I set, assign a null to that channel so I don't have to turn the volume down. This is the... Um, this should be the parent one. Yeah, this is the parrot one, and this is an um, this is an Amen break one I, I chopped up. I need to re-chop it because it's still got a little bit of slop in it, so that it's not as clean as I would like. It's really tricky with 0.96 seconds to play with. You can't like do the whole Amen break with just two buttons because it gets truncated each time. Um, so I need to chop it up into finer bits and then. But it is fun to do kind of live drum and bass and other weird stuff with it. I'll get to that in a minute here. But let's choose the as the parrot. So you could build a little uh, rhythm based on that. Again, it gets pretty busy and pretty ugly. So you'd have to dial it in and play with it, figure out what works for you. Um, but, you know, what the hell. It's something fun to play with. And um, so that is the um, the push mode. One of my favorite modes is the bouncing ball mode. Great for rhythm, especially polyrhythms and just fault, pure, pure wackiness. So in this one I'm going to go, I think layer 8 of the sounds is rhythm. I think it's, I think it's layer 8. So anything across this row are the built-in rhythm sounds. So in this um, bouncing ball mode, oops, oh, I have to play back the playback head. So now I can it's it's bouncing ball so the if I drop from the top it's the slowest thing so if you're trying to do like a slow rhythm and then you want to add something maybe half tempo and something really quick and then the very bottom be um, almost the bottom be ratchets the very bottom is off right now everything's off so I'm going to start this one at the top oops hello so make a liar out of me here maybe it's this one This one? There it is. So I'm going to pick uh, the rhythm sound again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Of course, I screwed that up. So it's like a kick drum. And timing is everything. You can go by start them at the same time, or start them off a little bit. Something somewhat cohesive. 
abrasive. but it's different and what's fun is now I can audition other things So the trick would be, uh, if you want to make complex polyrhythms with some variety, you would have to figure out a pattern of like less of these, um, and copy it to one of the other blocks, or just sample this the way it is. Take some of this stuff out, add some more stuff, make it work, and then either do it with um, you know, multi-tracking, or, or you could actually figure it out with a live with the blocks. It's just, it takes some time. And again, this could all go over MIDI if I wanted to. Right now, it's just all internal sounds. And put a little delay on it. Make it kind of fun. Pretty interesting stuff. Just goof around for a couple minutes here. Let's try some different sounds on here. And now let's add the parrot sounds. Why not? Fairly s small, very live room. It's all like linoleum and hard walls and, and shiny surfaces. So the reverb in here was insane. So I had to use RX to de reverb the. An earlier version I did was, was all full of crazy reverbs interacting. Here's a little whistle. I love this sound. It's a good. Water drip. Did really good water drip noises. That's like a coconut sound, like a like banging a coconut. There's a wolf whistle. Trippy stuff here. Let's try another effect like uh, slap. 
splicer effects. the flanger filter. It's grain shifter, this is a fun one. Pong delay. Some dub stuff. Yeah, anyway, all kinds of fun stuff on there. So that is a uh, crazy parrot bouncing ball stuff. But my favorite is doing the. Um, you saw that mode, the uh, you saw the draw mode, you saw the bounce mode, you saw random mode, and score mode. Those are all the modes. My favorite is the solo mode. Solo mode is the, basically the reverse of the bouncing ball mode, where this is the, the quickest part. You do ratchets up here instead of down here. So the the long it takes longer to come from down here up here and to repeat, but it's incredible for rhythms. So check this out. I'm back to the parrot. Playing. Oh boy, I forgot to do that. Hold on. I forgot to kill that layer. Goodbye. Go back to solo mode. Parrot selected. This is fun, and this is the one I also use for almond breaks and other fun stuff, so. Is that a like a, almost like a sneeze noise it makes. So it plays longer. Oops. Well, forgot I was gated it. I fixed that, I just hit the gate by accident. Oops. noises and stuff. So that's fun, but let's try the almond break. Now I'm in this mode. thing here is because they all come from the same recording obviously the original amen break 
uh, and because it's a stereo, um, actually this might be a mono sample, but the problem is um, you get phasing, right? Because if I play the same sound too close to each other from the same part of the recording, you get this phasing sound. You get this a lot of, if you watch a lot of Italian movies, the sound dubbing. Even on the, um, if you watch it with subtitles, often, they, uh, there's a lot of phasing issues in their audio recordings on their soundtracks and stuff. With sound effects and stuff, you get this kind of a whoosh, kind of whooshy noises and uh, it's just very interesting stuff, but so, sometimes if I if I play too many of these too close together from the same part of the recording, you'll hear phasing artifacts. So that's a tricky one um, that requires some more careful editing. So I don't exactly play too many things from the same part of the recording. You get an idea. Uh, a little bit sloppy because um, I left too many long samples in there, or I should have truncated them more. This is an older um, edit. I made a few edit attempts to kind of slice these up a little bit better. Each time I mess with this, I figure out some new stuff. Like, ooh, I gotta go back and change that one, change that one, make that one shorter, stuff like that. So, um, you get a rough idea. When you obviously there's no labeling here. You only have 16 slots to play with. So you can only do 16 slices per preset. So you got to pick the choice ones you want to use, and you have to figure out, put them in order that makes sense. So you can kind of, you know, dance around it, figure it out what works great. But you know, so up here you get the ratchets. <laughs> and as you can see, I could literally push every button if I wanted to. The polyphony is, is quite nice. So, but the problem is it gets really, really busy with this sample. It's very, a lot of reverb and noise and big booming sounds later on top of each other it's, it won't quite work but if you had a lot of thinner sounds you could literally just you know play them all at once if you wanted to just got to figure out one to start with oops sorry hit the wrong button Get a little bit of phasing there. On certain ones I played that were part of the same recording section, you get a little bit of a phasing issue. So, just a quick demo. It wasn't supposed to sound perfect. Uh, again, because the sound set isn't perfect, I need to edit it some more. But that's some of the power of this thing. And again, you, unless you've watched a lot of Turing on videos where someone's doing weird stuff, you've never probably seen this before. Um, most people do it like this they pick a layer that's, uh, um, sorry, they pick the, in the solo layer, they pick some kind of um, synthy sound and do pads with it which is also very cool
especially some of these that evolve. I'll show you on the app. I, I built, like I said, I built up a track uh, just before this thing. Just a real quick and dirty, not wonderful track. Just kind of show some of the stuff like I'm doing here, and also the blocks, changing blocks to build up a song. Um, but that's you know a good overall view of some stuff I maybe didn't show before. Um, another thing that was fun. Oh yeah. So if I do, let me go back to a. Um, a layer to build up something real quick and I'll show you the um, the loop length thing so we'll pick um, some kind of percussive thing here okay Simple percussive thing. Go into the gate mode. Some of these might be longer. See the the bass rings out longer. The kick drum. More truncated. You can also I think you can change the octave on this one. I forgot. Okay, doesn't work on the uh, drum presets. Here's the here's the um, loop length. So if you're in the middle of a song, you want to do like a, a build up. Go back to your original length. But what's fun is you can do this too. You pick while this is down, you can choose where it's doing it. Get variation that way without having to constantly click and find out which one works. You pick a length that works for whatever sequence you did and just jump around. Let's try a little. Uh... That's a little trick I, I, I didn't know in this mode you could actually use the wheel for here. Most of the time the wheel, um, like you saw, it will change presets in the preset selection mode. So that's fun. You can do that. Um, other than that, I've kind of exhausted that. So, like I said, um, using again using built built-in sounds. Some are nice, loopy ones that evolve. Good for the um, the the, uh, the drama that actually, you know, evolves over time. Um, and uh, again, I'm right now using MIDI in. I'm still on the original layer, the solo layer. 
that had this preset set. Um, but I still have the other one loaded. I can play the sequence anytime I want. That's this one. Oh, I changed this into, sorry, I forgot. I changed it to a rhythm preset. Um, but if I wanted to change it to something else, this is right now stopped. It's not playing here. Now it's basically acting as a sound module. Because this is controlling it via MIDI. So, this is what's fun about this is, is MIDI for some stuff, because this has four tracks, if I wanted to do four tracks on here. Um, and then I could also have some presets on here, sorry, some uh, steps already set up on here for other sounds on here as well. So again, just using Tenorion for everything, except for some of the sequencing. Or you could use it as, like I said, this is a master controller. You control the whole studio from this, a uh, bunch of gear, modular, whatever and just do MIDI out only. Or the other option which I was talking about before, which I need to, which is why I created the null notes, is um, designate which ones, which MIDI channels are going to be local and which MIDI channels are going to be out MIDI. And then you can essentially um, go from there and do some pretty interesting um, hybrid things. Because again, some of the sounds in here are quite good. And like I was showing, some of them loop very well. So they do pads and they do some synthy sounds, uh, stabby stuff, um, as well as uh, good percussion, things like that. Or load your own percussion sounds in here. And you still use it as a brain, but with your custom samples in here. So the hybrid approach is also very cool. Um, so what I want to do now is, you've already seen enough of this guy. As Nigel Tufnell would say, you've seen enough of that one. Don't point. Can never be played. <laughs> so I'll move this guy out of the way. I don't need this sequencer anymore. So I'll move this out of the way. And I'll bring in the iPad properly. And where did I put the audio cable for that? So start with the OG. Um, sadly, Yamaha took these out of the store because they didn't want to update it. So they, you can't get this anymore unless you already bought it. So if you know how the app door works, you basically have um, your... Um, hey, Tracker Jack, what's up? Been having lots of crazy Tenorion fun. You have to go back and watch the replay if you want to see a bunch of weird... MIDI stuff and uh, combo uses of things. Um, anyway, so uh, they this app is really good, and so is the secondary one they made called. This is TNRI because you know everything for the for a while the iPad was everything was I something I this I, I that. But then they made TNRE, which I'll show you in a bit which is their second attempt at taking this interface, making it more colorful, adding a bunch of like techno EDM sounds to it and stuff. So it's a totally different sound set because these are again, these are all sample based. And the interface looks different and stuff, but it's essentially the same thing. One thing I want to double check though, that might have been another change they made. So I'm in this, um, these are my different modes here. Make this go away. Is it going to keep bugging me about that? I don't want to take all my notes off, but maybe that will go away. Are you going to go away? Maybe it's not. Um, so when I go here and choose seven, nine, okay. So this is more like the, they laid this out just like the original. Uh, you go up to seven for score, then you get. Right. Yeah, seven for score, layer, layer eight, and nine are random, the one that draws the little shapes and you can spin it. Ten is also random, eleven. Okay, so you get four, seven score, four randoms. You get a draw mode, which is the one that keeps layering and 
whatever your performance is, it's all the errors or all the expression you give it. So that's draw mode. So looks like you get two draw modes. Bounce, you get one. And push, you get one. That's the one that blooms. And the sounds morph over time. And 16, my favorite, the solo mode. Where I was doing the parrot stuff now. I'm in break and all that. So, um, so this one mimics this guy. Not only does it look like it, but it, the functionality is the same. The E version added more score for some reason, I guess, because they figured people don't want all the crazy weird modes and many copies of those. So it gives you a lot more of the score and a lot less of the other modes, but it still gives you all the modes as well as new sounds, which is cool. So, for example, um, did I did it keep something I was playing with on here? I forgot. So let's go. So I put a few random notes in here a little while ago. Um, just to show it in action. So here it's blue instead of you know, white. So you can see it better on the screen. But the same graphics. You know, you get circles and squares and X's and diamonds and all kinds of stuff based on what instrument you're on, what, what you're playing. You still get your gate modes. Sorry. Gate mode. So make the notes longer. You still get your octave. Still get your loop points. And again, they give you the wheel. So once I change loop points, check this out, just like you saw before. Use the wheel and jump points. And you get your speed per layer. So quarter note, um, quarter note, eighth note, sixteen note, thirty second note. And on this layer, you get um, the. Um, which, you know, this side you get the which layer you're on, what's your uh, global tempo, what's your global uh, tuning, your octaves, uh, the layer volumes on the side here you can choose, and then your blocks. So, uh, and it has all kinds of other cool stuff. When you click on the screen here, you get all this stuff that's normally all the menus built into Tenorian with some extra stuff because it's software. You can do a lot more stuff. Um, pretty elaborate stuff actually, and because you guys, I don't know if you guys remember Wist. Hello, got more folks. How you doing, Dilip? Um, so remember Wist? This thing called Wist. A lot of the core gaps when they came out were using Wist. I know Gaz used to talk about it a lot on the on the Sonic State uh, app show that they had for a while. So this uses Wist, so you can actually um, connect to other apps. Um, either through Bluetooth to another iPad or within the same iPad, stuff like that. So you have crosstalk between all the apps, which is pretty cool, and interact with things. Because uh, one of the beautiful things on the original Tenorion is there's a master and slave mode. And I have actually I have two Tenorions, but I don't usually put them together. But when my friend and I each got one back in 08, I think it was, 07, 08, when I first got one, um... The um, I put, you know, we had one of ours was master was slave mode. We hooked them together and say what they would do. Oh, okay, so you can just make longer like like I do when I hook my OPZs together with the USB cable and turn on the uh, I go and edit the JSON file so I can actually make one a uh, um, a MIDI slave when I feel like it, and it just extends your amount of instruments so you can the amount of layers which is cool, but it can do more than that. That's just the most basic mode is the master slave mode. But because of this uh, technology, you can do master and then multiple slave off of it. So three or four or whatever, if you had if you had all the money for all the multiple Tenorions, or in this case, the software. You could run uh, the two Tenorion apps together. 
you could run Tenorio with some other apps, you know, and, and, and control stuff that way. So there's a lot of goodies in these menus that I've only scratched the surface on that go way beyond what the menu is here because of the uh, connectivity and wireless and things like that. So that is the TNRI app. Um, again, it's there in your history if you bought it already. It's iPad only. I, I, I tried loading it on my iPhone. Maybe at one point it worked on the iPhone, but it doesn't work in the OS I have now. This is an older OS, thank goodness, so this is working beautifully on here. Um, but a lot of people are saying it's not working too well in the newer OSs. Although one guy got it to work mostly, not 100%, but mostly on the Apple Vision thing, the VR headset, which is bizarre because that's a really modern version of iOS. And he still got it to work, and he's he's got his goggles on, and he's playing Sonorion, which is pretty funny. So um, it's mixed results. So here's TNRE. So immediately you see that the uh, color scheme is different. As I was saying before, the um, layers are different. See, so in this one you get 10 score and much less of the individual other layers. And I was messing around earlier just to make a, a visual demo as well as an audio demo of what this guy can do. So this is not some wonderful piece of music, but just to show the block mode and playing live while the other stuff is going on, which is a nice feature about Tenorion as well. So, for example, let's start off layer one. that's off a bit. I think I play with the tempo on this or something. Should sound better than that, but it's okay. It's a demo. And I go back to this mode, which is a little simpler. And I can go to my, um, to my live layer here. Evolving, which is nice, and then you can go with a block. bouncing ball and this is why I think something happened with the rhythm because it wasn't this off before but I did some with the rhythm somehow. But if you want to see it, I had a rhythm actually timed pretty well but for some reason it's not happy. So I 
to this mode back again, and then I can go back to this live mode. Gotta get the right notes. And I can change this to another layer now. Um, sorry, change this to another preset. One. Add some live percussion here. Showing, uh, build up some layers, change your blocks, uh, live stuff along with it, and again back to using my favorite layer 16, the solo mode, because it's wonderful. As you can see, I, I quickly went to uh, from percussive from a uh, drone layer for doing pads to a percussive preset, and then used a different area of the solo mode to get that fun, you know. Um, Turn this uh, turn all these off and just do the live percussion. Only hard thing here is um, here I can feel the buttons, so I know when I'm in the right spot. Here I get some missed triggers occasionally, or just nothing happens when I hit it because I'm like I can't. I have to look. I can't feel it. And when your hands get crowded, you can't really see too well. So. As fun as it is to be able to smear around real quick, which is a little harder on the buttons, it's uh, the tactile really helps. A lot of fun. So, also very useful. And of course, because this has full MIDI support as well as wireless and WIST and all that stuff, you can easily plug in a, um, a Mio with a camera connection kit and also use this to control this, just like I did this guy. This is just DIN 5 to the uh, adapter. And I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but if you do happen to buy a Tenori on you somewhere and it doesn't have this breakout cable, this is exactly the same cable they use on the Reface series. Reface DX, Reface CS, whatever. So that's kind of fun. This one came out first, but they decided to use this in the Refaces as well. So they, uh, you don't have to go looking for the Tenori on MIDI breakout. It's the same one as the Reface. So it's just something good to know. Um, what else? What else? What else? So I've done a lot of Tenori on stuff, more than I was able to cover before because I rediscovered some modes that I didn't remember. There's some tea here along. Um, another special thing I wanted to do, um, I didn't put it on the the roster for what I was going to do, but um, with all this talk of Dom lately and his passing and this uh, project people are working on to make um, 
a, an album on Bandcamp that would you know go to a charity for Lula May and stuff like that. I thought it'd be fun to show some of Dom's stuff that he worked on. I actually helped him beta test this app. Sadly, it's also out of the store. So the Yamaha stuff's out of the store because they don't support it anymore. The Dom's apps are both either hard to register or not available. So like uh, Incinerator, I have it registered, I think, on one computer, but I, I don't think I'll ever get it registered again, unfortunately, because obviously uh, he can not no longer support it, and um, it does need that uh, unlock. So that's sad. Uh, now I would lose a great, great man and a great friend and all that, but um, we lost some of his really cool apps that he worked on. Uh, however, I still have this one on my iPad. Thank goodness. I wish I could put it on my phone. Um, but I tried loading on my phone. I don't think it supports the latest o iOS because he worked on this many years ago. Um, I'm going to try it again, but I couldn't get it to work on my phone. But it is on my iPad, so I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, and it's cool, too, because not only is it a cool cost-effective app for people who want to relax you know, have relaxation if they have three different modes it's an infant a child and adult and depending you know what you're trying to do is get the kid to go to sleep get the kid to calm down people use it for meditation so he called it snuggle sounds and it's a, it's a cool uh, little app and, and he has some of his music in it. he has some ambient music in here that's really good so here it is snuggle sounds So let me go to home. Um, I forgot how to get to home. So best with headphones because it has a nice uh, immersive stereo experience. I'll just start with this one that I went to. So um, the this is called Delta Waves, and you can see how long it is. It's a three-hour ambient piece, and that's pretty cool. So. Um, Give me a second here before I do this. I don't want to forget to. Uh, stupid Instagram is being wacky again. You know, it only goes for an hour and then you have to um, fire it off again because it has to be dopey. Yeah, whatever. Get rid of that. Um, let me just give me a second here to fire off. You have to get a stream key every time, and then you have to manually invoke it once you start the stream. It's really stupid. All right, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Live video. Public. Here's my stream key. This is such a terrible system. Copy. Repaste my stream key in here. So dumb. Save changes. And then it should let me restart up the stream here, supposedly. Give it a second, and I'll come back to it. It's really, really a terrible system. Copy. Edit. Paste that in there. It's not doing it for some reason. I give up. I, d I was able to fire up before during the stream a second time, but I just forget about it. It's garbage. Anyway, um, so snuggle sounds goes. This particular one goes for three hours, so obviously I'm not going to play the whole thing. But I'll give you a nice little sample. And it's just really look at this interface. This is clever. 
you made this nice little balance interface. You can you can make it brighter, make it darker, near, far, and then you can mix the amount of music. You take it slow. fast and you could have more music and more rain very clever I'd forgotten these features were in here so here's your uh, it says infant child adult you can do random you can save custom stuff and there's even a little heartbeat thing in here choose the, the rhythm and you just turn it way down super cool and just let it play and get relaxed this one's called reflections got little shoes there that's the balance section. There's the sound section here. It's got the different styles you can choose from. Ambient music, natural world, comfort sounds, music boxes, meditation, binaural beats. And there's a timer. To, uh, if you want to make it a shorter session. Very clever. I'm going to stop that for a nice sample of that. Let's go back to adult. You can customize the look of the app. It's got a website for it. All the stuff you put in here. called beaches and you can play with the balance Really impressive stuff. More elaborate than, I mean, I play a lot of apps, synth apps, music apps, whatever. Um, a lot of them didn't have this kind of cool features in it. I thought it was pretty special for, for mainly a rela relaxation app. Uh, some people probably never looked at this page. They just go, oh, I want to play some cool sounds and some music and just meditate, relax, go to sleep, chill out after a bad day. Oh, sorry, this is beaches. I didn't fire it off the first time. You have to tap it. Then we got some water. So, it's nice to be able to share this with you guys because obviously we all missed Dom um, tremendously, but, uh, you know, I have a connection to this as well because I did help him beta test it. I used to work at it. Apple, I haven't made my own apps for a while, as well as testing stuff when I worked there in QA. <clears throat> and so I told him, hey, I'd love to, sounds like you work on some cool stuff, I'd like to help out. So he sent stuff to me and I gave him some feedback and and uh, it's cool to uh, see him finish this. And I think he had this out for about a year, 
a little more before he got ill. Um, anyway, so I think quite a few people at least knew about it and got to try it. It's just really sad that you can't get it anymore. If you did, like I said, if you did purchase it and you forgot you had it, you can go to your purchase history, just like you can for the Tenorion stuff and all that stuff, and, and try to download it if, if your OS supports it. But unfortunately, you, you can't get this kind of stuff when it's left the store, unless you've already bought it, or if you, unless you jailbreak your phone and get it some other means. Um, so, let's try this one, Visions. Oh, nice. I love cricket sounds. Wind chimes, crickets, some nice synthy stuff. Instagram. This is part two of the live stream tonight, doing some Tenorion stuff, hardware and app based. And I figured since I'm on the iPad, I should do a nice little tribute to Dom software. This is one he made, I think, two years ago, maybe a little more than that. I forgot when I started beta testing with him. Called Snuggle Sounds. Designed for meditation, relaxation, uh, help the people get to sleep, good for kids to listen to, calming stuff. There's actually, um, I forgot to check the mode there. Let's go back to balance. Let's go to infant. So, a lot of the presets are the same as far as the music and sounds, but he's already done presets for the filtering for infants, so it's set to be a little more gentle, far far rather than near, dark rather than bright, a little more music than sound effects, and a slightly lower pitch with this lower setting here, and this one has the heartbeat off, but that's pretty cool, that's an actual fetal heartbeat heard f inside the mother. So, that's the difference there. Let's see what the child is like. So, a little more aggressive. Half music, half nature sounds. Between high and low. And then adult is... A little more near, and a little more music. And you can customize your settings here with these surround sound controls. Default timer, I guess, is set for three hours, but you can set it to be whatever you want. So that's visions. Let's try daydreaming.
I bet I had a lot of fun making this. Some great, really great textures, ambient sounds. Nice mix of uh, real sound, synthy bits, nature sound effects, rain. It's probably even thunder on here at some point. I, I, def I remember the ocean, I remember the um, real percussion, I remember some of the nature sounds, but I don't remember any thunder sounds. It might, might have been too scary for kids if you want to put that on here. Now you can navigate by sound. Let's, so that was ambient. Let's go to uh, music boxes. Got uh, WC Arabesque. It's a great track. So it's got a sparkle setting here. more pure sounding and there's a smooth sound where it starts to smear it. We'll change the speed. Time slowing down. <laughs> Very cool. So he also has um, some meditation sounds here. Here's a uh, cosmic, a uh, sonic temple. Tenorion fun I had. Tenorion hardware, Tenorion apps on the iPad, uh, MIDI control, arpeggi arpeggiation stuff, um, using this as a sound brain as well as a, as a standalone controller slash uh, groove box. And while I'm in here playing with the iPad, I figured I might as well show this because a lot of people may not know about Dom's, Dominic Hawkins. Um, other works he did. You know, he had Mr. Wiggly Channel, which is great with the family and guests on there. I really, I was always bummed because he kept asking me to come on there as a guest, and I kept putting it off because I didn't know what I was going to talk about. <laughs> at the time, I had just started my Microscope channel, and I had some other music stuff I was working on. I just, I don't know. I guess I didn't feel worthy. But he pretty much had anyone on there, so I, I should have gone on there. I did show up many times uh, remotely on my laptop outside, just walking around, getting some air. So I did get to interact with him on the show quite a bit, which is fun, and gross everybody out with the microscope stuff, but it would have been fun to be on as a guest and talk about my music past and present, and it's just a super nice guy, I always had a kind word to say to people, and, but other than uh, his Imam stuff, and uh, his appearances on PSN, and Mr. Wiggly Channel, all that stuff, he was doing apps, so he had uh, Incinerator, which is a pretty cool audio processing app he had for Mac and Windows. Um, but he also made this, Snuggle Sounds, which is a, a really cool relaxation, meditation, sleep aid app um, with all kinds of crazy stuff in there. I, I, I helped him beta test uh, when he started doing it because I used to do apps at Apple. Uh, testing apps as well as making my own apps and so it was a lot of fun to work with him on that help him out um, but he obviously he changed a bunch um, before releasing it that I had missed I had been kind of in the early days of it this thing is deep I mean look at this you got this balance control you can change the uh, near and far bright and dull and then you have this uh, more chants, more 
chill, ambient kind of music, and then a speed control. This will be interesting. This is Theta Waves. Oh yeah. It's swirling around the the field there. So this one's disabled for binaural beats, but this one still has control. Left, more right, high and low theta, pretty cool. Let's go back to ambient music, that's probably my favorite category here. Blade Runner, big time. It's too bad she won't live, but then again, who does? terribly. Such a talented, cool guy. It's a shame that's this the only way you guys can hear this if you haven't bought the app. Taste of snuggle sounds. I'm going to do this so you can see what the interface looks like when you start a new listener. Add a new listener. So, type a listener you would like to add. Adult. Type the name. I'll just put test in here. And then you're in. It does ask it when you first launch the app. It does give you a couple extra little kind of uh, messages and stuff about what it is and, and 
what it's for and all that kind of stuff. But um, I thought I might show that when you start a new listener, but I don't don't see it there. So I think it was just the first time you actually run the app. But um, anyway, yeah, Snuggle Sounds. The icon looked like. I'll show you the icon here for it. Icon looked like this little little S looking thing with a blue background. So if you were lucky enough to get it and maybe you forgot that you had it on your device, let's just do a, a search and start typing Snuggle. Maybe you got lucky. If not, check your history in uh, the App Store, iOS only, as far as I remember. And uh, let's see if you got it. You can re-download it. <clears throat> but like I said, uh, I tried it on my iPhone and it didn't work. It didn't work on my old work iPhone from before I left work. And now I have a personal iPhone, much newer, much fancier OS, all that good stuff, but along with some other iOS stuff that this happens with. Uh, the app, um, I tried downloading it from the App Store, it didn't work, but I'll, I'll try it again. I might have done something wrong or I was in a hurry or something like that, but... That's the sad thing about, um, you know, this kind of stuff where, um, you know, like if somebody designs a hardware synth, like Dave Smith, long after he's gone, his hardware will be around for everyone to enjoy. Obviously, it needs repairing and parts replaced, stuff like that, but <clears throat> it's usable by anybody at any time. The app, stuff like this, if you didn't get it when it was available, just like the Wolfgang Palm stuff, and the guy from PPG. I have a bunch of his on another iPad uh, that I have tucked away right now. And I'll never get those apps again because he sold this intellectual property to some other company. And they never re-released them or rebranded them or anything. <clears throat> so they're gone. You can't get them in the store. The only thing you can get remotely like his stuff is the Nave app from Waldorf in the App Store. Which is also a great app, but it's not the same as the PPG stuff that that he came up with. Uh, one called Phoneme. It was all phonetics. Pro I just some of the, I'll do another stream on it at some point. I, I did it on the Ramsey show. I think at one point I also did another stream on it at one point. Crazy, crazy apps, uh, and and similar interface to DOMS with the multiple kind of uh, uh, virtual joystick kind of stuff, and and just morphing the hell out of sounds. Kind of like you get on a um, Hartman Neuron as well. If you guys haven't seen the software version of that, it's got these two little virtual joysticks you can use for effects as well as for um, for the uh, resonators, they call them. So the version of an oscillator. It's just crazy. Um, so, yeah. So I definitely want to share that. I'll, I'll do some more at some point. Just so people miss the stream or whatever, um, we'll catch it again. It's, just, it's good to get it out there so people know about some of his work that he worked on because, like I said, it's a it's a rare item now. You're not going to be able to download it anymore. And uh, eventually when this iPad dies, I won't have it anymore either. So, got to enjoy it while it lasts. Let me think a couple other things that might be worth sharing before I shut the stream down here. Might be some other quick music things I could show. Mm hmm. This is a fun one. I know Gaz Williams showed this on one of his streams a while back. Pure piano. I like this one a lot. Um, I think they modified it. This is, a, this is an older version. But this one's fun because um, just you know, basic thing. This is actual, um, essentially a virtual microphone. And you see, I move it around, these different areas change different colors. And you get this blending effect. So if I'm on top of the piano, get a little reverb, but it's pretty, pretty basic. I have a uh, sustain control here, too, so I can also um, you know, if I want to do like a foot pedal thing. But what's cool is you have these other modes as you move around and it morphs. 
So as I go up here, you can do reverse mode. Now if I go back, you see they have a blend color. So now I have a piano plus reverse at various levels. Go over here, now I have a um, pad mode, so I took the attack off. Do pad plus reverse. Pad plus Here you get uh, mellow, so it's a duller sound, almost like that. Uh, I think that there's some felt thing you could put down to give thing a duller sound, or you mix the two. And down here you have um, so let's see, oh, intimate. combination of normal and intimate. Over here you get percussive or I can get over here you get bright. So you do bright percussive and up here you get it's hard to read sometimes D-tune, a conky tonk, a western bar, or whatever. And up here you get. Did I already go to this one? Um, cinematic. So drowning reverb. Oops. Got a little glitch there. So there's normal with a little bit of cinematic reverb. Or cinematic plus. What was this called again? Cinematic and detune. <laughs> kind of a weird effect. And it's a fun little app, and you have other controls in here too, but it's just nice that you can, you know, briefly. Just morph around, pick a sound that you want without having a little bunch of reverb plugins and delay plugins and stuff. You just kind of keep hitting the key while you move it until you find a sound you like, a little hybrid sound, or do it while you're playing. I'm pretty sure there's some kind of way you could map this to a, a joystick on like a D50 or something like that and make it move around or, or, or a mouse or whatever if you want to continually move it while you're playing with one hand. It's kind of cool. Oh, thanks, Tracker Jack. Catch you later. Um, so that's a fun little one I haven't used for a while. Let's go through one quick while I'm on here. Mm -hmm. Funk Box is cool. I think I've shown this one before, but I might not have. So based on your sound set, it looks like a CR78, essentially, kind of, sort of, with some differences like actual pads and you can record all these things this is uh that one. Oh, you can do rolls. Somehow, how do you do the roll on here? It says roll, but it's not doing a roll. Interesting. 
Um, so yeah, it's fun. You have a little mixer, some pads so you can actually trigger sounds and not just hit a, a preset and just listen to it. But it's got 808 sounds in it. You can also do 909. Six oh six CR seventy eight Okay, so roll is just a repeat thing, but it's not that fast. Not doing a real roll. Interesting. Mark two. Zero seventy seven. So eventually it brings up all the drum machines you can do your lin drum. RX eleven. seen before. Got a lot in here. ER1 from Electribe. Machine Drum from Electron. Got uh, different 808 versions. Alternate versions of ER. Machine Drum. Here's 78 OG, it says here. Machine Jump is pretty cool. Let's see what this one has on it. Yeah, so that's Funk Box. Kind of cool. Very easy to get in there and either use a preset rhythm of some kind. stuff. Uh, not very expensive. I forgot how much it was, but it's, you know, most of these apps are pretty cheap. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure if it has MIDI. I didn't get that far into it, but pretty cool for like on the go, little drum machine stuff. Uh, what else we got? A few other things. Um, this one I've shown before, but it's kind of fun to revisit it. So Jordan Rudis has a bunch of apps out through Wisdom Music. And um, before he made a deal with Bliss, they're spelled like Bliss, B-L-E-A-S-S, -S, with the new version of this. This is the original version, which actually, it's simpler. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but this one I like a lot because you get your different modes here. You have classic sampling. In this case, I have some Nova Chord samples I got off of recording and chopped them up. I mean, this is a this is a divide down synth from 1938. And it sounds that good. Holy smokes! Anyway, it's this modern, uh, sorry, classic mode. So slow for pitch, fast for pitch. You go too high, and it's really short and it's munchkiny, right? Then it has granular mode, which is the modern thing everyone likes to do with their tweaks. And it's better when you do this mode where you can actually see what it's doing. Multiple playheads. And you can, you know, tweak out the samples. So that kind of stuff is fun. And then my favorite is modern mode. So most people, when they play a sample these days, they don't want to have the super slow for low pitch, super fast for high pitch, the old-fashioned sampling mode, unless that's the sound you're going for. But in the case of something like this, where I can only get one pitch, 
out of a Hammond Nova chord from some recording somewhere. Modern mode uses time stretching. So you get one sample stretched across the keys and it sounds good. And it's not all slowed down, sped up, weird artifacts and stuff. It's not perfect because, again, it's using an algorithm to do time stretching, like the old uh, Akai sampler started to do in the in the 90s. But this is great because you can just take it one sound and actually do chords, or two notes at a time, or whatever, and it sounds wonderful because they're all running at the same speed. As I can tell, looking around a bunch but not reading the manual yet, the new version of this sample whiz for by Blease, sample whiz two, I think it's called by Blees and Jordan Rudis, does not do this mode. I looked all over the place, so that sucks. So I'm glad I got this one because I don't think you can get this anymore. Another one of those apps that, if you bought it when you bought it, it's still available for download, but it's not in the store to download directly because they have the new version. But this modern mode is great. I mean, I got another uh, Nova Chord one. <laughs> Gotta wait for it to build the green. It's doing the math. these cool like wacky old Hammond Nova chord sounds get a whole new life in something like this so I love this a lot it's great really easy to sample into really easy to load samples from other stuff really easy to edit you know all these editing tools as well as just quickly grabbing things and moving around change your octave Change your playback range, some other little crazy settings you can do. Very, very nice. It's, oh, it's one of my favorites. Uh, what else we got? A couple more, then I'm going to call it. Another Jordan Rudis app, which is real famous, but some of you may not know it. Is GeoShred. And the great thing about GeoShred, it does have some good sounds already in it. And you can, you know, get pretty wild with it. But um, he licensed SWAM apps. So the high quality, you know, sampling, it's kind of like a sample physical model hybrid, or probably mostly a physical model at this point. I, I forgot. It's been a long time since I read about the SWAM stuff. But just insane. Um, sound sets on here and all this expression so unlike the Rolly Seaboard or Osmos whatever you have a screen you can't press down on the screen really there's a there's a new haptic thing you can do a little bit but it's not the same as a as a proper pressure plate or a squidgy keyboard or a long travel after touch thing so <laughs> But you can do a lot of the same stuff with it. Add extra expression here. stuff. Um, let's see. Where's my, my guitar stuff here? I'm trying to find my main. Does have Indian instruments in here? They're pretty wild. <laughs> Effects. Mm -hmm. 
keys and saxophones. So you get this overblowing thing. You can actually uh, enhance that even more and do flutter and growl. Check this out. You hear the whoosh. You can dial all those the breathy sounds in, how much growl, how much flutter. And it's nice because it gives you, um, you can lock in scales. Um, but it can also show the big gaps here where you have whole steps and half steps and stuff. And still play whatever you want to play. So really, really expressive. Just amazing. There's all kinds of flutes and yeah, it's nuts. Violins, um, violas, cellos, other wind instruments, and yeah, it's it's nuts. So I love geo It's very cool. Super expressive, especially for an iPad. Um, a couple more. Uh, I mentioned Nave earlier. Might as well show you Nave. So here's a Waldorf app. This is cool. Not as fun as the PPG stuff, but still pretty damn cool. It even has uh, 3D waveforms like you have on a Quantum. You can spin around, zoom in. See them as you edit them. Stuff changes depending on what you're editing. So I'm going through the slices there. See the red line there? Pretty cool. There's a lot of pages of stuff, all kinds of editing you can do. Some little XY pads here. Very cool. That's Nave. Um, a couple more here. And he was into Bukla stuff. Uh, this is this guy Brambos makes a lot of really interesting apps. This is called uh, Troublemaker, and it's a um, sorry Ripple Maker. This is Ripple Maker, and this is a um, Bukla Music Easel kind of clone. Looks different, but it gives you a lot of the same functionality and nice touch interface too, which is fun. So you can um, pick a preset here. Load. There's some pretty wild, like soundscapey stuff you can do in here. Um, let's see. Can't remember the, the crazy ones in here, but let's just pick one. Bolts and 
bobs. So there's your basic patch, and then you can just fire off, hit play. And you can do like a, a sequence here if you... I don't think the sequence is... Okay, it is enabled. It's a pretty tame patch. Usually get pretty aggressive pretty quickly with wave folding and all kinds of stuff. But it just depends on the patch. This is called Broken Beyond Repair. crazy. Yeah, there's uh, mutations you can do. <laughs> As, you know, it's all the standard stuff. You get plinky plonky stuff, but you also get some pretty nice uh, soundscapes. The uh, famous Krell patch, which is a simulation of the sounds made for um, Forbidden Planet by... Um, Oh, what is it? The Barons. B.B. Baron and... Uh, oh, I always forget the guy's name. It's George and B.B. Baron, something like that. That did the whole sound soundtrack with just, like, test equipment. Basically, the Heimbach of, the, of their day, using, uh, you know, really old, esoteric, uh, synthy kind of things, but mostly, like, test equipment, from what I remember. Beautiful soundtrack. You gotta check it out if you haven't seen Forbidden Planet. With a, a very young Leslie Nielsen back when he was trying to be a serious actor and didn't do the comedy stuff. So that's a uh, Ripple Maker. He also has Troublemaker, which is a 303 acid box, which is a lot of fun. Uh, here's a bunch of apps that are really good. Rambos. Uh, let's see what else I got on here. Got IMPC, which is decent. I've shown Aparillo before. I've shown Groovebox before. Here's a proper swam instrument by itself. This is the French horn app. This is how deep this stuff can get. So I've actually hooked my wind controller via Bluetooth to my iPad. Either that little um, recorder thing or the Silphio from France, which is much fancier. And <clears throat> you can do crazy stuff like this. I mean, watch the watch the valves on the virtual. French horn. Make the keyboard a little smaller. So all these little sliders, given the expression, can all be mapped CCs. This is fun. There's a, um, you know, mute equivalent. You can move to the horn bell. So there's a 
vibrato you can add here. And it's not your typical keyboard vibrato, it's proper vibrato you get from a brass. Sounds very different. Here you get expression, like the overblow, and the growls and stuff like you heard on the sax on the other instrument. And you can see the, the graph here showing what I'm doing. And they have the same kind of apps for strings and for all the other brass instruments. And yeah, it's just pretty wild. Swam stuff's amazing. All stuff by Urkham. Um, what other stuff is cool? This is a fun little. I mean, I didn't, just found this by accident. It's called Cauldron. All right. Retro looking kind of virtual analog synth. Sounds great. Polyphonic. kinds of effects, this crazy spawn engine where it has like a random function. Check this out. Random. Spawn it. A little bit different. Random. permutations based on this. So you're basically setting up some rules and spawning new presets. Some are messy and some are very nice. Get out of hand. So, nice stuff like that. Pretty cool. And I, just, I barely scratched it. I mean, that's probably the maybe the second time I've used the spawn thing on here. So yeah, you just sit here all day and make your own presets and not make any music. Um, but what the hell, right? Um, what else we got? A couple more. couple more. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, this is crazy. You like granular? There are much crazier granular apps than this, but this one's pretty nice. It's called FRMS. So it's kind of a standard synth look to it. <laughs> it's got some crazy. You can see the, the grains are being played over here. I think this is doing layers, which is why it still sounds the same. Kind of, sort of. Um, bank factory. 
I might be getting, oh, you know what, I might be interacting with this guy. I think Cauldron might be. You gotta be careful, sometimes he's talked to each other via MIDI. Yeah, that's why. So let's let you see the interface. It's not that crazy, but they do get really crazy. Kinds of editing in here. Crazy amounts of layers. Look how many layers in this one. It's got four layers. That one's going forward and backward. Very deep granular editor. Uh, synth granular synth. Let's see. Um, of course, one of my favorites. TC11. I got in this weird mode where I'm getting four screens at once. I forgot how to get out of it, so I'm just going to deal with it. Some of these also work with the accelerometer, so you can tilt the iPad while you're playing it. this little structure here. It's a tilt. Let's say that it changes when I tilt it. Beauty of multi-touch on an iPad. There are synths where you can do this on the screen for editing, but you cannot play this way. But this is the also, also the playing surface. So in this way, it's kind of like part really seaboard, part wacky graphic interface. It's just you know, so many things you can do with this thing. like secondary motions where you see the the thing is filling in to give it more <laughs> this is so nuts Let's 
some have really nice arps on them. day playing with crazy stuff. TC11. Love that program. Yeah, let's do one more. Getting tired here. <laughs> what else we got? This sample is two. Oh, here's Troublemaker. So, I've shown this before, but anyone who likes 303 acidy stuff this is nuts because it does it all in one box and then people are curious and want to have the actual acid box and the hardware with the circuitry and stuff but this thing's nuts it gives you delays and uh, all kinds of other kind of like wave folding stuff and it's pretty crazy so let me pick one of the presets that's probably the most representative of um, what you would expect. I think it's this one. So you can see the, the slurs. So I can basically come in here and do a little bit of delay. A little feedback. And then start playing with the tone. Choose your wave, the LFO wave for controlling modulations. Add some punch, add some decay. Some accents. And then you get wave folding. And some fuzz. This is where it gets really crazy. You can do some random stuff with a little bit of logic. You can do mutations, like I said on the other app. Variation, it will jump around. You can manually edit the notes. You can turn some into slurs. Also pretty amazing. If you have a there we go, I got my, got my slurs there. So I got the layout that I want. I can do those variations and stuff like that, but even these little quick things I can like slide over, I can flip it, I can flip it this way. Oh, 
this is a transpose. nuts after a while but it it's acid heaven for an acid person and it's not super simple compared to using a real tb303 or a td3 or even a, a tb3 the touch base ira one which is quite easy to use and, and very expressive with touching this stuff but this just and i'm this some features not even used yet but it's just these guys are very elaborate and in all kinds of cool stuff um just uh oh hey Kent, what's up? Sorry I was so distracted with my shit. I didn't notice you were there. Um so you wanna if you wanna if you're curious, I did a super Tenorion stream tonight with uh more hardware stuff, some MIDI implementation, Tenorion iOS apps, all kinds of weird combinations of stuff, kind of a fairly exhaustive Tenorion approach because I had forgotten some stuff last time I was doing th things and it just gave me some ideas to have fun and show people how crazy these instruments are and uh, how useful they are and uh, you can just come up with ideas that people I, most of the videos you see on Tenorion is mostly the same factory plinky plunky bleep bloop kind of demos which are fine but the thing is so much more capable than that just like this stuff is more capable than that people just do silly booklet demos mostly <clears throat> so I did a bunch of that and then I started showing some iOS apps and uh, because I ran across uh, I had forgotten uh, that I already had it on my iPad I thought I lost it forever but um, one of Dom's apps called Snuggle Sounds which I helped him beta test a while back I still have it on my iPad and I'm like oh people haven't seen this app probably you can't buy it anymore you could download it if you purchased it and We'll get lucky if you can. I, I couldn't get it to work on one of my devices, but it's working on this old iPad beautifully. So I did a little demo of, of Snuggle Sounds with some settings. And it's just a really cool interface. It's such a clever guy. Um, some of the stuff I don't even remember from beta testing. He added some stuff after I had helped him with it. So, yeah, just to give people an idea of, of an app you'll never see again um, and just how, how cool it is and how well made it was. It sounds great. So I did a little demo on that, and then just started playing with some other random iOS apps just before I shut down here. So that was uh, Troublemaker by Brambos, so super acid box on an iPad. And I don't think I'll do one more. So I'm getting a little, getting a little sleepy. Um... That's another good one here. So deep mind. Filter jam is cool. Well, this one's great if I mean this this doesn't have a, a crazy sound engine on it. And you guys haven't seen Fugue Machine before, it's pretty incredible. Um It'll basically help you write fugues, which is a, obviously a common style used by Bach and a bunch of other people. Um, so you have four parts, and so some can be going forward, some can go backward, some can be going different speeds, uh, different octaves, different whatever, and uh, it's really, really cool. So this is a great MIDI sequencer for controlling anything outboard or even internally between apps on the iPad. Because the sound engine is pretty basic, just to give you the idea of your patterns and stuff. For example, I'll just fire off um, whatever came up here. I don't know which preset this is, but check it out. Oh, oh, you know what? I was probably playing this with MIDI at one point. It's probably not triggering now. Hold on. That's dumb. I need to find out what I was doing here. Uh, Fusion MIDI... Medium. Quick start. I probably turned off the internal 
sound on it. Tempo key, scale, loop length, volume, reverb, settings. Let's go to settings. Yeah, synth enabled, I turned it off. Because I was trying to do some cool stuff with MIDI. So all kinds of stuff you can do with MIDI in here. It's really elaborate. So let's see what it does now. So just to make it less noisy, I'm going to turn all of these off and do one at a time. Build it up. Backward, one's going forward, that one's going double speed, forward. And the last one, much slower going backward. There's some live controls you can do here while you're playing it. Couple of these in here are actually famous Bach pieces too. Let's see. Ooh, look at this one. See what this one is. machine. So great. I could have sworn there were a couple of famous ones. I don't know. It's printing so small. Um, it's one of the hidden melody ones. So let me try...
This one's called Nice. Yeah, it's only got a few notes out. Let's do High and Low. No, that's also got hardly any notes in it, too. How about uh, Chase? That looks interesting. It's a good name for it. Uh, what do we got here? Here's a longer one. Let's see how this one is. This one's called um, Talk. that will do it so thanks for everyone for showing up um, this is like one of those last minute things I just kind of threw together uh, I might do another one on Friday after PSN just because I need to spend a little more time in the studio um, hunting down my noise issues and some cables um, track down some of those crazy hums and stuff. If not, I'll have to use the filter again in StreamYard, but that's okay. It's still fun to, to do it. Do some demos and things and that. I was going to do another uh, <clears throat> MIDI guitar demo with a different type of guitar. And uh, if you guys watched the show I did with Eddie, the first uh, Six Oscillator show, we were talking about different um, MIDI guitar options and different equipment and one of the things I talked about I was going to demo on Friday because the next show Eddie wants to go over um, I hinted at it in the last show just kind of asking questions about basic systems to get people going if they did want to just noodle around with the guitar even if they don't know how to play it just to have an alternative MIDI control that's kind of fun that you can tweak and, and just how to get that 
from the guitar to a MIDI signal to a computer or a synth or whatever. So I have this Roland GI20 <coughs> hex, hex pickup to MIDI box, which is really, really works very, very well polyphonically and everything tracks really well. And I did a, uh, some demos a while back. I didn't record them. I just was screwing around um, of hooking that to a Reface DX. And it was very, very expressive and had a lot of fun with it. I just wasn't wasn't getting to the point where I wanted to record it because it was just kind of random stuff. But So I will do something with that probably on Friday as a precursor to the upcoming, the next episode with Eddie. So, um... I'll do that and do a couple other things. Um, not sure what yet. I've got my Tenorion demo pretty, pretty much fleshed out. Don't need to do that again for a while. Um, and I may give the Snuggle Sounds from Dom another play, just so people who missed this or weren't awake or whatever um, will get a chance to see some of his work because. It's good quality stuff, as you would expect. Dom was, you know, a very talented guy and uh, very thorough when it came to uh, making his hardware jams and making his uh, his EMOM stuff and and these apps, you know, the incinerator and snuggle sounds and stuff. It's super cool. So I just to share that with some more people so they get exposed to it since you can't buy it anymore or download it anymore if you haven't already bought it. And that will do it, I think. So, thanks again, everybody. And I'll see you soon. Stay synthy.